Now, Marmel, it was a bit like the, the late, late show. Things just looked like they were about to go away from us today and then you, you popped up in the right place at the right time. Uh, yeah, like, we were in control of the game, you know, from the first half. We won a lot, was cruising, it was good. Just a like, little lapse of concentration in the second half and that just cost us a couple of goals. And I was happy I could just, you know, come in at the end and just kill, kill at least one point out of the game. The, the game in its early stages looked a bit like a, a chess match. Would you, would you agree with that or not? Um, I, thought, I thought that we was more in control in the first half, definitely. We, you know, we was playing well, was, was linking up well and everything. But it literally was just small lapses of concentration just cost us, really. And that was the thing, in the first half over the piece, do you think we controlled that or not? Um, yeah, 100%, yeah, we, we controlled it. But it's just the last second half, last couple of minutes or so, it was a bit just disjointed and that. And I just thought that, you know, in them, in them parts of the games that we just need to just get control, slow it down a bit and just get control. And that's the thing, you mentioned it being a little bit disjointed there. You know, first half we looked quite comfortable. Brian Kinnear didn't really have a save to make. Um, and really it was about five minutes into the second half when things kind of went wrong for about 10, 15 minutes. As a player, what would you put that down to when you were sitting watching that? What did you, you think was happening? Um, I, you know, I, I don't even know. Like, we was just, we were just in control. Like, we was in control and then lapse of concentration. Literally, yes, everyone's just kind of just shut off five minutes but you know that will cost you we can't, can't, like, can't switch off and after we had that first lapse of concentration it looked like it was perhaps a couple of players leaving the ball to each other and that's what allowed the striker to, to nip between them it, do you think we were still suffering from the kind of shock of that equaliser when all of a sudden before you know it you're then a goal behind yeah um, you know, when you go when, you, when, they, when they come back up and they score um, everyone just kind of, kind of supposed to like you need to get motivated you know what I mean and you know say oh yeah we're going to get the next goal but sometimes you know it can go the opposite way, and then you know people's confidence like drop a little bit, and then you know, the mistakes creep in, and then you know it might just cost you. And you mentioned confidence there. Has that taken a little bit of a, a battering recently? Because we were on an incredible run up to the game at East End Park, where we, we finally suffered a defeat for the first time in something like 14 league games, um, and then we've kind of stuttered a few bit with a few draws uh, in the last five and a couple of defeats, but. Obviously, you thought Montrose may have have lifted it, but what is the mood in the camp at the moment like? Uh, everyone's positive. We just we want, we want to get through all the games that we've got left and just uh, try to get as many points because we've already secured fourth place. That was one of our things that we know we wanted to check off. But you know, we want to stay second place and keep that going into the playoffs. From a psychological point of view, how important was it to get that equalising goal at the end? Uh, it was very important. Like we set out obviously to win, and you know. Going into playoffs, obviously we're probably playing them. Um, we wanted to have that, you know, psychological um, advantage over them when they came here. You know, if we would have won the game, but obviously we've drew. But you know, it's, it's, it's still alright. Right. We could see the manager having a few words with you before you came on. What was he saying? Uh, it was just, you know, the usual like, come on, you know, run your socks off and you know, try to get us a goal back, get us back in the game. Speaking of which, that late goal that you, you did get again, that's your your second uh, goal in a home game in a row, correct? Uh, yeah, I want to get stumped on and then one here, yeah. Obviously, you've been patient and you must be delighted to now, you know, when your chance presents itself, that you're now taking it. Yeah, I'm, I'm just glad, glad to be back amongst the goals and stuff and the action, so. And I guess from a player's point of view, that's going to give the manager some food for thought as well, isn't it? For sure, for sure, yeah. Talk us through the goal. Uh, Yatesy, throw in. Yatesy just swung it into the box. Good header from Hendo and I just volleyed in. And that's the thing at that point, certainly the fans and the, the Kevin McAllister stand seem to appreciate that. Yeah, everyone was loving it. It was a good goal. Very we also get uh, back on level terms and you know see things out. Upon reflection, is it from a losing position a point that you'll take or is it a, a slightly grudging one? Uh, no, it's a point we'll take for sure. We'll take that point. Obviously the three points would have been uh, better, but we'll, we'll take that point. With just a few games to go now, um, is, is the aim still secure second and take it from there? Yeah, secure second, you know. It's going to the playoffs positive line. Win, win the last couple of games of the season and go to the playoffs firing. And, uh, and just finally on a, on a personal level, is it a case of perhaps chapping the manager's door midweek to say any chance of a start boss? Yeah, I might have to, I have to knock on his door, yeah. yeah. Well, diplomatic is always well played today. Congratulations on the goal and as always, Ramon, thanks for your time. Cheers.